What's up YouTube? My name is Brandon and today we are going to talk about the ideal gas law. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is called Boyle's law. Let's say I have a container that's filled with a gas and I fix the number of molecules that are inside it, meaning I keep the jar sealed. But I keep the temperature also constant, so let's say it's in thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. If I adjust the pressure and I measured its volume, I would realize that the pressure is inversely proportional to its volume. That means that the pressure of the gas is equal to some number divided by its volume. Before the ideal gas law was invented, this was tricky to understand what that number was. The proportionality constant is what they call it. The reason why is because of something called systematic errors. That's usually something that is wrong with your device. It's not really what you're doing personally. So it always produces answers that are slightly off. So this will cause a lot of disagreement with other scientists that are conducting the same experiments. So we needed some kind of model that united pressure and volume, and we just said that they're at least inversely proportional to each other. This is known as Boyle's Law. Next up is gay lussacs Law. So imagine that I still have my container and the number of molecules inside it is still fixed, but instead of fixing the temperature, I'll fix the volume instead. So the container isn't allowed to expand or contract. So if I start to rise the temperature, I would notice that the pressure would also increase as well. And if I lower the temperature, the pressure would decrease. And it turns out that the pressure is proportional to the temperature, meaning that the pressure is equal to some number times the temperature. That is known as gay lussacs Law. Finally, there is Charles's Law. So if I fix the pressure of my system and also the number of molecules, and I adjust the temperature and measure its volume, I'll notice that when the volume increases, the temperature increases. Or if the temperature decreases, the volume decreases. In other words, the volume is proportional to the temperature, meaning that the volume is equal to some number times the temperature. That is known as Charles's Law. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky, but just bear with me. So, for example, Boyle's Law. We said that pressure is equal to C1 divided by V, where C1 is some number that we don't know. And we assume that the temperature T and the number of molecules N were constant. There were some number also. So if we multiply by Tn divided by Tn, that's just equal to one. And so we're perfectly allowed to do that. Anything times one is just itself. And for the Tn in the numerator, we're going to pull that out and keep that in our equation. For the Tn in the denominator, we're going to put that under C1. And we're gonna call that entire quantity C1 prime. That's why you don't see a Tn in the denominator anymore. We're allowed to do that because in the end, it's some number that we're going to find out later. And we get it in the form of pressure times volume is equal to C1 prime times the number of molecules times temperature. And it turns out that we can do this for Guy Lussac's law and also Charles's law. And for all three of those equations to be true, that must mean that C1 prime is equal to C2 prime, which must equal C3 prime. And in the thermodynamic limit, all gases will behave to where this value equals something very specific. It's called Boltzmann's constant, which is equal to 1.3807 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin. Later on, we'll see that this value has roles in other places, but for now, it is the number that describes an ideal gas in this equation. So there you have it. We have reached the ideal gas law equation. And you may have noticed that I said in the thermodynamic limit, we get pressure times volume is equal to the number of molecules times Boltzmann's constant times temperature. And in no way did I do any kind of mathematics to get to the Boltzmann constant or derive it in any way. This is because the three laws that we used were actually empirical laws. We didn't use any kind of analytical theory, and in later videos, I'll publish something about that. Um, we'll be able to derive the ideal gas equation using something called the kinetic theory of gases. But for now, I just wanted to leave you guys with this and let you know that when we reach this conclusion, the assumptions that we're making is that the intermolecular forces between the gas molecules colliding with each other is negligible. In other words, they're completely elastic. They bounce off each other like hard spheres. And so that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something and please subscribe.